Excited to have a pair of guests today with me. Uh, one is Salim, and he's going to be talking about his massive improvements with his ankylosing spondylitis that he was diagnosed with uh, a little over a year ago, and his girlfriend, Gab Chan, who has supported him 24-7 throughout this process. And we're going to hear about his transformation, how he feels now after doing the Patterson program, um, and learn lessons about how he has implemented the program and what he has been able to achieve. So welcome to the both of you. Hello. Well, why don't we start, as we often do on these episodes, um, by hearing a quick before and after. Give us a sample of what we're going to expect. Well, yeah, before uh, the... Um yeah, before the Pedersen program, uh, and I had severe pains and uh, a morning stiffness because of my illness. It's called uh, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, and it's affecting basically the uh, spine, all the spine, and uh, the sacroiliac joints. These are the joints between the sacrum and the ilium bones. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you you cannot. Uh, I mean, if it's really on bad days, uh, your movement is uh, yeah very compromised, and also if you have uh, a lot of inflammation in your uh, sacroiliac joints, then you can't walk, or mm. I walk like a ninety-year-old. So <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's impossible to, to to walk for more than hundred and two hundred meters. Um, I was I wasn't able to. Uh, I couldn't even walk to the car and drive somewhere. So it was really bad. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then uh, after uh, a lot of. Uh, life changes. Yeah, uh, it got really uh, better. So the symptoms were not as much as before, uh, and uh, I had a lot of night sweats. Uh, these were also uh, getting uh, uh, getting uh, less. less. Yeah, getting less, and. Yeah, but uh, let's let's uh, yeah maybe start from the beginning. Uh, how how all this started? Yeah, yeah. Please uh, do. Yeah, tell us tell us what <laughs> what you how it all began. Um, and also, um, I uh, I just want to let everyone know that that uh, you're you're in Dusseldorf. Both of you are originally uh, or are German. So. Um, you know, we understand that English as a second language means that uh, I'm going to talk a little bit slower and I want the audience to also um, understand that you're doing this in English for us and we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, we are Austrian uh, but living in Germany. Right, so I see. I that's another twist. <laughs> yeah, that's another twist. <laughs> so maybe a, a few twists will come. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, take us back to how it began um, yeah. with you, um, with the ankylosing spondylitis, which has a similar underlying cause in my view. And I want to talk about um, some of the misconceptions about this later, but let's hear your story first. Yeah. Yeah. So before starting uh, the person program, um, in, like I said, in January 2018, uh, I was experiencing a lot of night sweats, back pain. Uh, these were starting from the neck all the way down to uh, the sacroiliac joints. Uh, my inflammatory markers, uh, CRP and ECR, were still unusually high. Um, I'm saying still because I was on a starch-reduced uh, vegan diet with as little fat and oils as possible uh, for about three to four months uh, after my diagnosis. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, so, the, so, the, so the pain was still there. Um, I was getting a little better. And the problem was like, uh, you, you, are, you were also talking in your videos, I, I lost a lot of weight. So 
I lost seven kilograms in four months. Mm. Uh, which, uh, yeah, it was basically a lot of raw uh, food. Uh, and had uh, still a pale and yellowish color and not much energy on some days. So it was, uh, uh, the disease was very active at the time. Now tell me, let me ask you, um, did you just decide to go about the, going down that diet path yourself or did you find, um, did someone suggest this to you? Because uh, what is a common mis- understanding about ankylosing spondylitis is that people should avoid starch and often then replace it with basically anything you want, animal products, dairy products, and the scientific studies on ankylosing spondylitis, I believe, are the most misleading of any particular individual inflammatory arthritic condition. Um, without naming names, there have been publications by a particular individual doctor that have been very popular over the years with an anti-starch message. And if you avoid starch, which is a complex carbohydrate and a plant food, you then have to look at other things. And I have, for anyone with ankylosing spondylitis who's interested in this, a free document that debunks all the science regarding this and shows that a plant-based diet is the solution for inflammation in any joint, not just the spine. Yeah, okay. So I'm curious, um, how did you come about that initial dietary approach? Uh, so we were, uh, I was vegan uh, starting from 2014, beginning of 2014. To I see. So you, you've been plant-based for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it really plant-based because you can be vegan and also uh, eat a lot of pasta and pizza stuff. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I was, okay, I mean, yeah, obviously plant-based, but uh, not that much of a whole food. Gotcha. Lot of uh, processed, lot of processed foods? It, no, no, not, uh, no not, not also really processed, so I was cooking also a lot of at home. Yeah, but not not really looking uh, looking uh, what was I eating? Yeah. I, I mean, maybe I was eating uh, one week uh, uh, a lot of uh, pasta pizza stuff and not much like salads and vegetables and fruits. Yeah, I see. So I I had no uh, I mean I wasn't also using a dairy uh, diary like yeah. uh, now and I uh, was not aware of. What I was eating. I mean, I was also eating some lentils and stuff. So, but, uh, we were watching a lot of Dr. Gregor's yeah. uh, advices uh, and also other, the other doctors like uh, Dr. Ornish and Dr. McDougall and so on. But yeah, of course, my, my love for uh, homemade junk food, as I call it, was uh, uh, yeah very big. Mm. Um, and also it was very stressful uh, the, the last few years before before the uh, this disease yeah so maybe it was a combination a combination of these two and also I'm uh, um, I mean I'm just guessing but I was eating a lot of uh, oatmeal uh, and uh, I mean 500 grams a day maybe and uh, the problem in Germany for oatmeal is that it's very, uh, very uh, polluted with glyphosate. Oh. And Roundup. Roundup. Round oh, my gosh. Yeah, and yeah. we didn't know it. So uh, after, after the disease, there's uh, a lot of research, of course, also in, into that yeah. stuff. Uh, and, yeah, and yeah, environmental toxins and so on. But at the time, I didn't know it, so I was just eating it every every day, every morning. Mm. Uh, and maybe it also triggered some something, uh, I mean, uh, affected the permeability of, of my gut because it's, it's uh, in, in some articles it's uh, talked uh, that uh, it's acting as an... Uh, uh, as a, it's acting in the gut as an antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking you're, that. Yes, you are taking 
So I, I was, I, I'm, I, I try to avoid antibiotics if I don't have a huge infection. But on the other side, probably I was eating it every day and uh, taking like antibiotics every day. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know. That's 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 just some theory that a lot of these lifestyle things got together and triggered the triggered the disease. Um. Uh, uh, what? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and because of this, uh, I mean, non-starch thing. That's uh, yeah, that's a misconception. Uh, I was on a after the uh, diagnosis. Uh, I was on a whole food uh, plant-based diet. Yeah. So the, the starch part was more like not eating tons of pet- potatoes and so on. So it was mm-hmm. like because we have read uh, some some papers that that it's uh, in that's. Uh, in your gut, it's making uh, the, the bacteria, some form of bacteria grow more that are maybe related to ankylosing spondylitis. So it was mm-hmm. also not, uh, not a definitive research, but, but some papers. So we wanted to be cautious. And um, I was just tracking how many uh, starches I was getting, to, trying to get uh, the but, my uh, vitamins and all the nutrition from more green uh, vegetables. Well, and, but it, yeah, but but of course, as I said, it was it was working a little, but not not that much uh, with, with that diet, and the, I was losing a lot of weight. Well, let me just congratulate you first of all. You you do at that time, even though you weren't making as much progress as you wanted. You clearly had a great understanding of most of the fundamentals, which is that you're already on a plant-based diet. Okay, you might have only been on a on an okay plant-based diet, but you know you you're already on the right path. Um, did a lot of home cooking, great. Okay, um, when you got diagnosed, you immediately shifted your diet to more of a leafy green, more of a, a whole foods approach. Again, like this is more um yeah not not immediately i mean there was a lot of a lot of uh, discussion and, <laughs> right, okay <laughs> okay discussion between us was, i was yeah. more like screaming and running around like no pasta no pizza anymore how is this possible <laughs> yeah yeah sure 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 but you got there in the end um and yeah. you didn't have to do it um after waiting 10 years and going on to biologic drugs before you made your decision you know you went for it straight away and this is this is important this is a really really smart wise kind of intelligent thinking so um also the sort of thinking that you can have when you've got a clear mind and you aren't being influenced by the drug filled f- f- and addictive foods like meat and dairy products right so well done now Okay, so you were making some progress, but you're still in a lot of pain. Um, and I can only imagine um, how awful and um, really unsettling it must be to have inflammation in the spine. I mean, that must really kind of uh, almost like a form of torture because it's the foundation of your entire physical existence, the spine. And to have inflammation in that, I mean, it must be not just physically debilitating, but emotionally horrible to experience. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was like uh, the, the inflammation in the spine was making uh, muscle spasms uh, in, at, at night, mostly, uh, in my case. And uh, I, I think all the night long, uh, one day I was so half uh, awake, uh, like half conscious, and just observing my body that while it spasmed through uh, my uh, yeah, tra- trapez, trapezius. Uh, trapezius muscles and the, all, all, the, all the chest muscles, mm-hmm. and, and the, um, also where, where, our, where our belly are. So the, where the, Abdominals? Uh, Abdominal, yeah, the yeah. abdominal muscles. Yeah. So and the funny part was, it's uh, I I couldn't do, I mean, any uh, uh, sports uh, and so on, or no no weightlifting. But I was literally building a six pack from from <laughs> this <laughs> from this spasms. I 
I mean, it, it was shocking. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, I was in a, in a lot of pain, but it was also a little funny, but, but I get, of course, worried because it, it was not normal. Like, like you're putting a tense device all, all night long and every night, uh, to, to these muscles. So a tense device is just, uh, maybe, you know, it mm. is electrical, yeah. uh, device, sim stimulation devices, uh, yeah, yes. a lot of all the advertisement for building muscle and so on. Uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was really horrible. And like I said, I couldn't, uh, at some point I couldn't, uh, get out of bed and in the, in the morning, one time I thought I was paralyzed, so I couldn't move a single, uh, muscle or joint. So I was just lying there and just in shock and then it got a little better uh, with the passing minutes and so on. But I think at that day it took me two hours or maybe more to get out of bed. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, even after you get out of bed, the pain is still there. And so the, the spine is, I mean, you, you really get it after, after it's get inflamed, inflamed and it's not, uh, you can move it much is like, responsible for, I don't know, maybe 70, 90% of your movement. So <laughs> yeah, you are, you are completely, I don't know, uh, like, uh, some sort of, uh, par paralyzed, but, paralyzed, but it was, it, it, was, it was getting better with movement. So I was doing also yoga, uh, yeah. uh, before the diagnosis started because of my, uh, neck uh, problems. So all started with, uh, all this started with, uh, infection with a, a sore throat infection, uh, that lasted one month and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was. I think one of the longest uh, lasting infections in my life. And after that, the neck pains started and it mm. got worse and mm. uh, uh, spreads all over the body, like I mean, like the spine and the, the, uh, the sacroiliac joints. And also to the front of uh, my, uh, to, to my chest. And I was, uh, I, one day I was at the emergency room uh, because of chest pain or this rib pain and they, they thought it's something with my heart and done some tests, but yeah, it was, it was not, not the case. And also the, the, there, the CRP and ESR levels were okay. So after a while they got out of control and my orthopedists, uh, said, okay, maybe you should try a rheumatologist. And so through a family friend, a very close family friend, we found some, an, another orthopedist and he also told, sent us, sent us immediately to a acquaint, acquainted uh, rheumatologist. And yeah, he has done then some uh, tests there, uh, this typical uh, uh, inflammatory uh, rheumatoid yeah. tests. Like like movement test, like uh, I don't know the, the technical terms are like sugar test, uh, like in the motion in the lumbar spine, mm -hmm. uh, where it's, it's the spine part here, yeah, um, like on this level, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, some manu maneuvers to stress the sacroiliac joints, and this was very hurtful, and yeah, some chest expansion tests. Uh, how, if I could breathe uh, normally, or was my breathing more uh, uh, yeah, shallow, and of course range of motion. Like I was, I was doing yoga at the time for about three months or maybe more, uh, but I couldn't reach my barely my kneecaps. Wow! Yeah. Uh, wow. Was, so and yeah, and and he told us, okay, you are like. 90 year old man so that's that's that shouldn't be the case uh, it's, it's definitely not normal so he ordered some more tests like the gene test hlab 27 and that was positive and all the mri showed this inflammation on my spine and mm. on the sacroiliac joint mm. so it was for him it was an obvious case of enclosing uh, spondylitis mm. and yeah Wow. Okay. Very interesting. And a lot of people who aren't familiar with the condition, I'm sure, are now appreciating just how, you know, horrible and significant and, and de debilitating 
uh, it is. So thanks for going through all that with us. Um, so in your story, I think we're up to the point where you're several months in, you've eliminated starch, you've stayed plant-based, you've made it healthier based on the guidelines from some of our favorite doctors we all know. And then you have now um, seen a little bit of progress. Uh, but let's now, let's, let's for the rest of our conversation, let's talk positive and let's talk about um, the, the improvements that you've made and how you did it. Yeah, so all, all, all on this process, I mean, AI Gokchan was uh, also uh, researching as hobby, as a hobby, uh, a few time, a few hours uh, uh, during the day uh, before my disease and after the disease. I think it was like 18 hours full time research <laughs> on the on the disease. And so we discovered uh, a lot of uh, things. And peer reviewed journals. Yeah, peer reviewed journals uh, and stuff. Next and week. yeah, uh, scammed uh, a lot of books. And one of the encounters was, I think, your your site or your, the TEDx talk. So we, we don't know, but uh, it was very uh, inspiring. And uh, I was very surprised about the claims and testimonials where a lot of people have gotten control over their disease and some some had and were symptom free. So it was unbelievable for me because the doctors were telling, "Okay, you have now this disease and you will take NSA, so non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs." And also at one point, uh, my rheumatologist suggested, "Yeah, you will, you should start with biologica, and that was uh, like um, uh, atomic bomb for yeah. of, of uh, <laughs> uh, medicine yeah. for me because it's I mean it, it's surpri- suppressing the my immune system and uh, sh- should suppress my immune system, and yeah, I was I was very very afraid of that uh, of the side effects of it." And also of the NSAIDs, I mean, NSAID drugs. So, uh, so we, we were, yeah, we were immediately hooked uh, at your program and, uh, yeah, just uh, trying out some free materials and looking at your lists and so on. And after a while, uh, we just, uh, it was a no brainer to purchase it and just starting going head on into the program. And uh, yeah, but I couldn't start immediately. I mean, I, I think it was uh, January, end of January, January of 2018, uh, where I was uh, prepared and also set my mind to uh, yeah, just start and go with the program. And so, so I, I have done the cleanse. So the first day of the cleanse, uh, it was, yeah, for the first time in my life, uh, it was a little hard. Uh, but the second day was, uh, yeah, a really, a really shock. So I jumped out of, out of bed and I, I think I ran to the toilet in the morning and, and then all my uh, circulatory system just collapsed. So it, oh. I was just sitting there and for, for three hours, I think I couldn't walk and had nausea. Um, but yeah. So your body just, like, body wasn't used to it. Suddenly you're doing. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't used to it. So, <laughs> uh, and after that, we have read a lot of about fasting and so on. And uh, normally people have, I am much more worse symptoms if they are if they are not on a healthy healthy food or plant based diet before. So the their body releases, I think, all the toxins and so on. And yeah, of course, you don't get a lot of calories. So yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a you must be like you say in your videos, uh, rest and yeah. don't walk, don't run around the house and so on. Just be calm and rest. Yeah, watch watch DVDs <laughs> or. You know, yeah. So, but but uh, I mean, it was it was an eye opener, and yeah. uh, because all the pain was gone, and afterwards, uh, and I couldn't believe it. So it was uh, we we already knew that it's something it has something to do with the gut and uh, with food and so on. But just 
just taking, just eating a little salad for two days without anything, and you are like pain free. I mean, how how could this could this be possible? Because the doctor said, okay, you must take every day this NSAID, and you are going to the biological now route. So, so it was it was unbelievable, and then I was. Uh, hooked uh, of course who more hooked <laughs> to the program and yeah we started the testing with the yeah. food uh, yeah. of course uh, the pain got back uh, mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the tests progressed on some foods uh, with some foods i had real problems like mm-hmm. like shades and mm-hmm. and even in the beginning the sweet potato was i was eating sweet potato and I had a little sweating and so on so the yeah. So a little, yeah, the body was, body was reacting to it, but yeah. it got used to it. So the sweet potato, it, it just got used to it in two weeks, I think. But yeah. other things, yeah. Is, isn't, that, more... isn't that very interesting when, you know, the, the conventional medical scientific approach with ankylosing spondylitis and diet is to avoid starch. And after two weeks, you're eating sweet potatoes like crazy and you're feeling better. I mean, it just, it's so stupid. I mean, I really, really take it personally when there are publications in the medical literature that are downright wrong. I find that offensive because people trust the medical publications and it's just so upsetting. And that's why with ankylosing spondylitis in particular, they are most incorrect. Yeah. 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 I mean, just just does just, just this plant really plant based approach uh, where you eat a lot of green stuff is like making wonders. Uh, I yeah. mean, like you said, uh, salads with a big, huge salad with every meal. I mean, it's it's, it's just uh, have so much. And yeah, and for keeping up your, I mean, you are used to another routine and uh, you are. Uh, only with salad, for example, it's it's very difficult because you get this uh, this hunger. Uh, um, how do you call it in English? I don't know this. Uh, it's in German, it's called a uh, high hunger. It's like uh, where you in the evening where you crave like crazy uh, <laughs> sweet stuff or other stuff. And yeah, with sweet potato, and then I mean you are. Okay, it's it's not it's not like jelly be, jelly beans or something, but it's, it's something that you can uh, you can put a fire fire onto onto this craving fire of craving. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It was definitely helping, and so I I had uh, a lot of problems with the other approach with this uh, raw uh, the only raw eating raw approach. I mean, it yeah. obviously helps, but uh yeah it's it was it was very difficult and i i don't know if i could do it like one year or more well you know that um or you may or may not know i did raw for eight months and i had significant but inconsistent uh results from doing it but let me just say a couple of things about it uh, about a raw vegan approach my experience first of all my weight loss was like world world class i mean i was skeleton like at the end of that and i was counting calories and was doing over three thousand calories a day mostly coming from soaked almonds and soaked macadamias and soaked pumpkin seeds Uh, and even with a ton of fruit fruit juices dates as many calories as i could consume in a day and counting them i couldn't keep my weight on it got very very skinny um that was one thing Um, The other thing is that I was making mistakes, though, during that time. I was having some oils, if I remember correctly, because I hadn't yet had my discovery um, where one night I told my uh, girlfriend, now wife, uh, to leave the oils off the salad because I'd become um, so paranoid about them. And uh, we had an argument about it and she left the oils off one night. Um, and then she said, but it's going to taste horrible. The salad, it's plain. How can you eat it? And I'm like, just let me test it. I haven't tried it. And I tested it and next day felt tremendous. And so I never had the oils ever again. Um, and then also I was making mistakes like getting whole coconuts, paying $5 for a coconut, drinking the coconut water, and then thinking, 
what a waste. I've paid $5 for a coconut. I'm definitely going to eat the meat on the inside as well. And it wasn't until I only drank the water and threw away the rest that I feel good the next day. And, you know, I was making all these mistakes, right? So, um, but, but raw food so hard that I don't recommend it because, um, I just don't want to worry about people. If I've recommended something, I want to know that they're going to be okay, that nutritionally everything is complete. There's enough calories. They have every all the vitamins, minerals. They take the vitamin B12 and I can sleep at night. I don't want to worry about people if they're on a raw food diet because stuff can go wrong. It's really hard. Yeah, well, of course. And uh, I was also worried about uh, about also the, 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 about your baseline on the on the same on the same page and. But we were uh, like, uh, yeah, going crazy about your material and watching all your videos and so on. And then we found this uh, video podcast where you uh, are doing it with a nutritionist yes. and your, your baseline, and she just putting it into this uh, into this program, and it was nutritionally complete. Yes. And so I was uh, relaxed. Yeah. I was very relaxed and said, yeah, okay, now it's nutritionally complete and I don't need to worry any- mm. about anything. Just eat, eat the stuff. And yeah, yeah, I, I was also getting used to, used, used, used to the taste of a lot of things uh, mm. without oil. I mean, I, I, I already tried uh, reducing my oil before, before that, um, mm. to like 80, 10, 10 diet, the yeah. famous, uh, uh, but yeah you, you need to you need to do uh, some other changes if you have this autoimmune disease so it's not yeah. like like you said uh, uh yeah this 80 10 10 or raw and so on i mean you you could find the find the golden middle but it, it takes time and effort and so on and yeah. you as all there's already a program that works so yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> well well you know i'm obviously I'm obviously a little biased, but I come from this bias from 11 years since I was diagnosed. And for the first half of that, all I did every single moment of my life was, like you guys, research, apply, test. uh, And my job enabled me um, over all that time to only work half an hour a week, maybe, maybe an hour a week because of my entertainment profession. And so all that time I just went through this. And look, the nuances... And the detail that's involved to understand how to get through this tiny, tiny window to success is so, so great that you can't succeed with anything else, in my view, than getting everything right. And that's why I feel that I, you know, and we are aware of a path forward that does get as close to everything right as we can. Um, we haven't talked about your medications and whether it took, you took them, but uh, in the book that I'm working on daily now and hoping to get out within the next few months, um, I talk. Uh, I have got a whole chapter about medication management, and you know this, this is crucial as well because there is no no meat, dairy, and oils that you can eat that can do as much damage as ten years on prednisone, right? So. We got to get that right as well. We can't be on the wrong meds. So, so I'm excited. What we're talking about now. You're starting to make improvements. Tell us, tell us, move us forward now to to um, through this process and into some of the victories that you were experiencing. Yeah, the victories were definitely also on this medicine part. Uh, in the beginning, I mean, uh, the medicine definitely helped to get me out of bed. So I, I couldn't uh, in the in the in the at the di- diagnosis I couldn't get out of bed. But uh, with the medicine, I, I could start to move more. Uh, but obviously, the side effects was uh, always on my mind, and I, this was not the path I I, I wanted to take. Mm. And after starting uh, starting a program, uh, I think after one one and a half months, two months. Uh, my CRP and ESR uh, levels were normal, so it were, there was no in, more inflammation. Um, and I was at my rheumatologist and told him, uh, "Okay, my blood levels are fine. I have still some pain. Um, 
I don't know, pro, maybe it was at that time some chronic pain. Um, don't, don't know, some, of course, some food related that it was getting worse if I, have, if I was eating the wrong food. But the, then he told me, okay, uh, you can then just use your medicine as, uh, as needed. Yeah. So you don't need to take it every day. So that was a huge relief because, uh, yeah, every day, every, everywhere, also the patient, and the, the other uh, older patients that uh, have gone through this uh, enclosing spondylitis, spondylitis process for many years, they, they, they were just telling, you can't go with these drugs for your life. They will just kill you. And even, even we did, didn't do that and their spine was just... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the the thing is the spine gets uh, because of this inflammation gets like uh, like a bone, so it yeah. has a mobility. Mm. And but they they weren't taking the medicine because I mean, of course your you, your spine is not <laughs> like like a bone, but but you want you can live uh, for, further. But without med with this medicine, they they they, they were telling okay, man. You will shape, uh, you will uh, maybe lose 20, 30 years of your life. Yeah, right. So, so that that was definitely out of question. And the side, I mean, on the medicine, it was telling us that it's uh, making the guts, uh, the gut lining, uh, affecting your gut. Yeah. And so we, we were trying to heal the gut, the <laughs> gut lining. <laughs> and so uh, it was it was like a schizophrenic situation on one side i'm i, I was trying to 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 heal the, not the symptoms but the root cause, cause of it root cause of it and on the other side all this all this medication also a lot of pain medication like ibuprofen uh that 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 was given to me was destroying uh, mm. Not all the progress, but probably yeah. some of the progress. So it was, uh, yeah, it, it, they, they, this were, they were hard uh, times also psychologically. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, but, but yeah, so after my blood levels were okay, I was, I wasn't, a, uh, I didn't take not much uh, medicine, and only at some some points where I had flare ups. Uh, so flare ups are just where the disease gets really active. And uh, the medicine, and did you only ever take non-steroidal anti-inflammatories with only ever that range of drug? Yeah, yeah, only, only, only non-steroid, steroid, steroid, anti-inflammatory medicine. And uh, yeah, tried two thing, two of them, one of one. I don't know if I can tell the names or if it's a problem, but look. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter which. Yeah. One one of them I wouldn't advise. So it was really bad. So it's called. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are there are two in Germany that are used, and one I would really not advise. Uh, for the stomach, it causes a lot of stomach and gut problems and so on. So the people will know if they are if they research it. <laughs> so I yeah. I should I must not give the names away. A lot of people have problems with that. And so yeah, I tried both of them, and it was, I mean, one was a horrible experience, and the other one, yeah, it, it was helping, but, but not on, only for the symptoms, and I was not interested in the symptoms, yeah. uh, so yeah. I was interested, interested in the root cause and how can, how can I manage this disease better, and maybe get, uh, in the future, get uh, symptom-free. Yeah, so... Uh, I I was also doing a lot of cleansing, like, uh, but yeah, a lot of, like um, you you suggested it only in the beginning, but I was doing it uh, uh, one day, uh, one every week, uh, one day I was mm. doing a cleanse or a fasting uh, period. How long for? Uh, yeah, but after after several after several months, so I was already on on the on your program for three months and yeah. was was really uh, making progress uh, and getting to know my body and what it's reacting to. Also, also the little reactions, uh, just just observing what is ha happening to it yeah. and journal journaling a lot. Uh, I mean, every day uh, my my pain. Uh, 
and or other symptoms and all the foods uh, that I was eating. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And, but uh, so at some points, the disease uh, was getting really active. For example, it was uh, um, I had a reaction in my eye. So it's uh, uveitis, uh, and yeah. it's very common if you yeah. have this disease. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So there, I tried, for example. Um, I, I was very nervous and I, I started with the cleanse for two days and then I tried to switch to, to more like a juice fasting. So I did it for four, four to five days maybe. Um, yeah, it was very hard, uh, but the doctors told me it will take four to six weeks to, to get rid of this uh, uh, inflammation in my eye with, with cortisone, mm. uh, but it just took two weeks. Awesome. So, okay, so yeah, yeah. just in case, <laughs> in case some people didn't catch that, you're talking about uveitis, right? Uveitis, yeah. Yes. Uveitis. Now, a um, yes. couple of our, our support members have that condition. Um, as you say, it uh, it's you know it pops up from time to time um, as a secondary autoimmune condition with you know, all of the major ones like rheumatoid and sciatic and ankylizing and so on. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a scary thing, you know, inflammation in the eye. It's a very scary thing. So, um, and so I'm very, very, um, uh, very, very pleased and interested to hear. So you said normally they would take four to six weeks of cortisone treatment to address it. And you said you were able to get rid of it in two weeks doing a lot of yeah. cleansing. Yeah, under under two weeks. I mean, in one after one week to nine nine days, maybe seven to nine days, yeah. all the redness was gone. Uh -huh. And after two weeks, I was again at the eye doctor to to have a con yeah. to, so that yeah. he could take a checkup. And he said, "Okay, it's 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 fine now. Uh, uh, if if it's happening, it happens again." And yeah, I. I was not uh, very aware of the secondary uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. causes of the that it causes of this disease. So I just got it. I thought it was a eye infection, and mm. I didn't go to the doctor immediately. So mm. that was also uh, also a very huge risk. So if, uh, mm. if anyone is listening and yeah. just if you have it, just go to the doctor because uh, yeah, it's you should uh, be very out. careful. Yeah, very careful about it. You could you could go actually blind by this uh, inflammation in your eye. So just go to the doctor immediately if you see something. And yeah, I, I waited for I don't know three three days and then got to the doctor. And yeah, he just gave me some cortisone and eye drops and so on. And after yeah. Yeah, after one day or two days, I started with this cleanse and then this uh, more radical fasting. And I think overall in yeah, nine days, it was nine to ten days, it was uh, fine. I Can think. you tell me what the cleanse was? Because nine days of only vegetable juice cleansing is probably too much for most people. But did you, um, if someone has this condition and they're thinking about doing this, uh, did your cleanse involve some food as well? Yeah, it was just the cleanse uh, described in your program. Oh, you just went so, back to the baseline foods. Uh, no, no, not huh? even baseline to the cleanse. The actual so two, was, the, the what what I have in my program as the two day, the yeah. two day cleanse yeah. uh, where you can eat uh, as much salad yeah. uh, as you want, but without anything. Wow. Uh, okay. So, so that 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 uh, because I didn't try any water fasting before yeah. that or, or juice fasting, so yeah. uh, I, I didn't know if I can hold that that uh, a long time. But yeah, I was cleansing, doing this cleanse every week, so I was awesome. more used to it. Yeah. So I just yeah I Extended just it. made it yeah made it three three days to four days, and then the last one day or two days I tried some. Uh, yeah, juice or water fasting, leaving all all uh, all foods uh, or yeah, this, not all this food, but salads like out as well. Like salads, yeah, salads more like smooth, maybe a little mm. smoothy like so on. Green leafy, yeah, yeah, the green leafy vegetables were just are. I think the 
these are the key to a lot of <laughs> a lot of things. Absolutely, to help the body. Yeah, and yeah, about fasting, it really helps to uh, so the the body can concentrate on you know, healing itself and not digestion. So yeah. that's that's the basic thing. There are a yeah. lot of mechanisms about it, and um, yeah, everyone should read into it and ask their doctor if they can do it and not. Because it's uh, yeah, it's also advised only on some uh, extreme situations where you have a disease or inflammation and so on. It's, mm. and so, mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's just, that's super. Uh, just, just be, yeah. Just be careful. Also doing some also these experimentations and always talk to professionals about it. Definitely. Because, and and yeah. obviously you ha you're uh, living with your girlfriend who's keeping a close eye on you the entire time, so she knows that if you were to sort of I don't know, feel a little weak. Uh, she's right there to help out. And that's crucial, you know, and that's what I say just for the two-day cleanse as part of our standard process. Um, you want to make sure that the per that someone's aware that you're doing the cleanse and that you're in close contact with them so that if you feel a little weak or something's not quite right or you just want someone to get up and go and get you something, you've got a partner, you've got someone to help you out. So that's obviously uh, um, been instrumental for you, not just for the cleanse, um, but to go through this whole process. So I'd like you just to talk about the Very power cool. of having a loving partner to help you through this, and then I want you to wrap up for us and tell us, you know, how your body feels um, today and uh, and so on. So first of all, tell us about the, the power of having support. Yeah, it, it was just, it was, uh, the support was a game changer for me. I mean, it was, uh, li it was, it was just, uh, as I call, call it, life saving uh, mm -hmm. because it was all the psychological support and uh, yeah, I mean, emotionally and motivationally, and also yeah, a lot of uh, just diving into into this disease and what it's all about. Uh, it's it was mostly done by by Gökçen, so I was just I'm I'm more the do doer type. So oh, yeah. uh, I mean, if, if you have a new program and new stuff, just send it to me and I will try it out. And, <laughs> and I, of course, I'm I'm interested in the science uh, yeah. of it, but but I'm not the scientist in the family. So <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, so I I like more doing it, and uh, but for doing it, you need also. Um, uh, it's it's very difficult. You have pain. You have uh, a lot of stuff going on with this disease. Like uh, yeah, yeah, even financially and so on, uh, as everybody maybe knows. And so I mean, you, you have your mind full, and then you need the motivation to change your life. I mean, yeah. changing your lifestyle. That, that's that's a huge work. I mean, everybody talks about life change, and. Uh, it's it's not it's not really easy and you need you need a lot of motivation you need a lot of support uh, like like you say in your program just get all the support you can have yeah. from all the people around you yeah. and then then it it will work also I mean this little change and I think this little change is just uh, do some little changes not huge changes every day a little change and then. Mm. Uh, have effects, but yeah, to the yeah, Yorkshire was supporting me, yeah, seven, uh, 24 7, and sometimes I couldn't get out of the house because it was maybe too cold for me or too much pay, uh, some grocery shopping or doing doing other stuff. I mean, I couldn't sit uh, in front of my computer, I was sitting like uh, 18 hours maybe a day before that, and before because of my job and other things so that uh, yeah she helped me with a lot a lot and just uh, but but the, I think the most important part was the motivation motivation and uh, yeah just just coming always with new ideas and mm. if something didn't work then with another thing and just just this positive mindset yeah uh, that, that I'm also trying to uphold all the time now. <laughs> mm, mm, it's very mm. because you can, if, if all these problems, you can like go into a spiral. Oh my and, gosh, no doubt about it. In fact, if you yeah. if you don't have support and you just go through the medical processes, I mean, I'd I'd consider it 
almost a default situation that you'd end up depressed and you'd end up um, miserable, uh, angry, frustrated, um, and and like my wife used to uh, work in a bone mineral density scanning clinic, and that was insightful for its own, you know reasons finding out about how that system works and that's uh, for a separate discussion but um, what she used to find is that when some people would come in and they were getting their bone mineral density scanned and here in Australia if you have rheumatoid arthritis or any of the inflammatory arthritic autoimmune conditions you can get a concession or even free access to bone mineral density scanning it's covered by the government to help you monitor your disease progress she said she can After a period of time working for the organization, she could start to guess what the person's diagnosis was when they came in the door because quite often some people were coming in with a lot of pain and uh, they were just a little bit short. They were just a little bit agitated or a little bit frustrated and not because they're bad people, but because it was hard getting up the stairs or the door was heavy. The door was heavy at the clinic and they had to push it open. And when you're in pain with a sore elbow and sore hands, that's annoying, you know. And so she felt really sort of more appreciation and compassion for for, uh, for for the condition and what I was going through when she saw, look, the, every little thing in life can agitate you when you're in pain. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's hard. The default position is that it's hard. You're always battling this internal signal, alarm signals always going off. Beep, beep, beep inside you all the time. It's pain, it's pain, it's pain. And that can drive you nuts. And so, you know, that's when you need the support of someone you can talk to this about and, and have that loving connection and know that it's okay and that, that this will, this will, this will uh, get easier and life will improve. And if you don't think that's going to happen, then how are you meant to kind of feel happiness in life, you know? So thank you, Gab Chent, for being there for Selim this entire time. And thank you for uh, joining us on this podcast and if you're listening to this they uh just had a little kiss which is which is nice um um now tell us where are you t- today then what what's happening for your body now what are you capable of uh and then tell us uh you know what's next for you so t- first of all give us give, tell us how your body feels yeah uh, physically i feel i feel really good um uh, i mean this this food is uh, although I, I think nutritionally it cuts it's uh, it's like it's like was it like a wonder <laughs> or a miracle for me i don't know uh, i i was uh, because of my disease everyone all the doctors and physiotherapists and so on were telling me you must be active you must be active okay i was doing already uh, yoga every day and so on. And also I got uh, uh, just doing maybe some advertising, but he was on your podcast, so it's okay, I think, uh, the Wim Hof uh, method. Oh, Wim, Wim Hof. We love Wim Hof. Yeah, the Wim, Wim Hof method. So that was also helping me a lot with yeah. getting me yeah. really uh, uh, it controlling the pain level, the uh-huh. pain uh, the culture was, was was like a miracle. Really? You, you really? Have, so so you, you found hours. you found a lot of benefit from doing Wim's techniques. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot of benefit. Awesome. Uh, okay, I would call it uh, probably eight, 70 to eighty uh, percent nutrition. Yeah, and there are, the rest just uh, other uh, changes like yeah, yoga, meditation, breathing techniques. Yeah. Uh, and, Doing all kinds of uh, sports and so on. Yeah, Excellent. I was. Uh, I, I started to uh, swimming. They told me always uh, try to swim. It's very good. Uh, actually, I couldn't swim in in, in a closed uh, swimming pool. I mean, it was all closed uh, right. without a bathing suit. So it uh, was. I was so cold. I was. I was, yeah. I was getting into the cold. water. Yeah. Uh, and I, only 15 after 15 minutes, I, I couldn't swim anymore. I was just shaking, and I got me a swimming suit, a neoprene suit. Yeah. And I was. Yeah, I was the only only guy there, like a, like a crazy swimming with a neoprene, and they thought maybe okay, he has a professional or something. <laughs> what he used to hearing for? I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah. <laughs> But after after your diet and so on, uh, it, it's also this, or or maybe in combination with this uh, 
uh, cold water uh, thing. It it got it exposure. It got better, and I could swim for one hour more than wow. one hour. And awesome. problems. I I could ride my bike again uh, for uh, long hours, and yeah. also I could uh, I couldn't run. And there's a, a funny or maybe yeah, at the time scary story where I just. Uh, couldn't really run, so I was not able to run, but maybe it doesn't uh, sound that terrible, but if you have to cross uh, uh, the road mm. and you are in the middle of it and it just turns to a red, yeah. then uh, you have a problem if yeah. you can't run. So you know, that was that was a yeah, yeah, uh, really also some of the terrible experiences. Uh, and yeah, then I, I now I can run and swim and uh, do do my bicycle. And actually, I'm yeah I'm thinking to to make uh, uh, to uh, start a tri triathlon and to finish a triathlon. At first, uh, I I couldn't. I before the disease, uh, I was also running a little, but only for 30, 40 minutes. And like five kilometers, six kilometers, and now um, I don't know if it's your program, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm betting on it. But yeah. I can run for uh, two hours, and also I wow. have my marathon, half marathon finished last week. Half marathon. Yeah, half marathon. So wow. it was a, a twenty-one kilometers in two hours and ten minutes. I mean, it's not a record, but okay, I yeah. I got. Uh, yeah, um, spondylitis. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I think I don't know. And but yeah, it's it's yeah. Let me tell you, it's not just. Uh, of course, uh, everything is good. Uh, like uh, uh, perfect. perfect. I have still uh, some chronic pain, and I must be very ca cautious about my food. So if I have eat uh, a pizza, for example. Oh, uh, a full yeah. pizza, and then you can forget it. I mean, your performance goes down, and the pain starts, and, yeah. and this, this this chronic pain also gets worse. Sure. So, so, but uh, I learned that I could eat maybe one slice, and the, <laughs> the body could. Yeah, I mean, it's still all the, it's still not good. I can feel I, I yeah. can feel the nuances. Yeah. But uh, it's it, it's it's okay for the it's okay for the body. So it, you, you don't get night sweats and uh, yeah. or the or more pain and so on with just with just a little cheating i mean you 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 are allowed i think to cheat a little yeah. um, but but don't overdo it so it just <laughs> you also lose your progress i mean you you must uh, it takes i don't know maybe one week two weeks to to get to get to the, the normal routine and so on uh, yeah yeah just just stick to the program till uh, you are mostly symptom free. Uh, that would be my advice. And um, this is long term goal. Yeah, this is a, definitely a long term uh, goal. Uh, also, my long term goal to be symptom free. Uh, and um, yeah, we are planning to run with uh, Gakchan a full marathon in the future, uh, and have some smaller races planned in the next couple of months. So that's also giving uh, a lot of kicks. So just just plan for nice things that you want to do and uh, that that you want to achieve maybe to 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 hold on this program because it's mm. it's not it's not always easy to to restrict yourself. Mm. Uh, doing a lot of changes and just just have some goals and the right mindset is it. I think it's very important. Mm. Uh, and I have a yeah. Personal, yeah, and the, the most important thing, uh, of course, was I was able to start uh, to work again. Oh wow! And well done. So that's a, that was a problem. That was a huge problem for me because I, uh, before the disease, I was working like crazy and yes. a couple of years, and I mean, it was a it was a part of my life, and I was uh, a very nice team, and uh, yeah, they also yeah, my bosses, I I. I I just want, I must tell it, they just supported me all the way in this yeah. disease and just, they just were telling me, okay, you uh, just get better and yeah. then we, we can uh, move forward. It's not a problem. You must get better. It's the uh, main thing. Uh, 
So it, then I could start, I mean, I started with my job, not full time, uh, because, mm. yeah, still uh, getting better. Uh, mm. yeah, better and acquainted to, to, to this job because it's not easy to, to sit down or stand down for eight mm. hours or more. Uh, even though, I mean, yeah, the, and the other problem is this, I, on spondylitis, I think that the people, or maybe also on arthritis, that the people try to maybe to overachieve a little. Yeah. Uh, Very good so point. That, that, yeah, that's not, that's, that's mm. not my saying. I was on a rehab for one month and there was uh, more pro professional uh, patients there they, that they had the disease for 40 minutes, for, uh, for 30 years maybe, and they were said, yeah, typical uh, enclosing spondylitis patient. He is trying to overachieve. Yeah. And the problem is, the, and the people don't see your pain that's inside. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can run maybe, a lot of people could maybe run a half marathon, I can, but there is still, there is this still chronic, some chronic pain, there are still some morning stiff and stuff and so on. And I, I must still work several years, I think, on on my body that it's the symptoms will normalize. Mm. So the, everyone that is also not affected should really take into account some um, some diseases are unfortunately invisible uh, to most to most of them, and just uh, yeah, it's, it's not it's not just back pain. <laughs> as oh, they tell absolutely, us. certainly no doubt about that. Well. I think your point about overachieving is very, very uh, powerful one. Um, you know, I think that um, to speak generally of all inflammatory arthritis, if we think of it uh, as an underlying cause of some degree of stress on the body, whether it be dietary stress or um, stress placed on the lymphatic system by not moving it, by not exercising, uh, stress through work, emotional stress um, or whether it be some kind of uh, other form of stress or like a, a infection, you know, has put a stress on the immune system. Some kind of stress in some format um, has contributed to the uh, onset of the condition from all of us. And when we apply a dramatic amount of interpersonal and work-related stress on top of all that existing stress, that's where things can really go wrong. And you're absolutely right. I think that these conditions af afflict type A personalities, overachievers. Why? Because we operate in a fight or flight state all the time. It's got to get done. There's deadlines. I want more. I've got to do this. And that is not a digestive state. It's not a calm state. It's not a peaceful, relaxed, balanced state. And therefore, there's imbalance. And and additional stress on the body. So I am, you know, 100% agree on that. So I applaud your approach with, you know, not making the same mistake over again, which is to try and now get back to work as quickly as possible and to be the Superman and not to run half marathons every three or four months, but just to say, look, you know, find the new Selim, find the Selim that has balance one that has a long-term goal to be able to get rid of this sort of lingering bit of inflammation that still is significant after you've gotten rid of the monster horrific inflammation. Now you've got like a smaller enemy and you can work on that long-term whilst balancing everything else and probably uh, also getting married and having kids. So <laughs> I like to throw those kind of curveballs at you guys. So um, who knows? Next time we talk, I, who knows? Who knows? Put that idea out yeah, there. As well. I'm the big ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So look, thank you for sharing today, both of you. And uh, it's it's I'm, I always enjoy uh, hearing um, stories, and especially really heartfelt ones like you, like yourself. And it's a story of of um, teamwork and success and that's that's stuff that we want to share and put out into the world so thank you very much i really appreciate uh you guys coming on the show yeah thank you thank you for the program and yeah your uh, uh, support of the community and just sharing your knowledge i mean it's, it's it was a game changer for me and as i can see in the testimonials uh, for a lot of people for thousands of people so 
Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, if I just can say one more thing, go for it. Uh, we are also. I mean, if it's not a problem, uh, if it is, you can just cut it out. <laughs> Uh, we are doing also some blogging and yeah, I'm personally some YouTube uh, stuff. It's just also, I think maybe a, a yeah, rehabilitation for me personally, just to talk about this stuff and just give the information uh, like, like you are doing. Uh, and yeah, I also mentioned you in some blog posts and YouTube videos <laughs> of ours. Excellent. Yeah your name and i mean if it's if it's okay for you i i will mention you more <laughs> sure all you need to do what what's the uh is it a youtube channel or is it a blog yeah it's a it's a blog i mean i mean we are all over the place now we must i think just focus on some some <laughs> some, some social media uh, yeah it's a blog mainly and the youtube channel called uh, packtastichealth.com uh, is the blog and on YouTube, just Factastic Health is just facts and Factastic. So it's, uh, we, we just saw that the most important role to take is the, is the role of the facts, the science role, yeah. uh, like you did it. And mm. yeah, we are also taking the power from it. Mm. And uh, good. Uh, yeah, everything there, uh, what we try to do is, uh, should be fact based. We are trying to do this back base, so fantastic. Uh, and All right, just share well, information with, with, with other people. Wonderful, it's a good feeling when you do it, and you've done that today really nicely. So, we'll put a link to, uh, in case people are not sure of the spelling or something, we'll put a link directly to uh, your blog on the transcription of our, uh, of our site. So, just go to uh, pattersonprogram.com and you'll be able to search for Selim, S-E-L-I-M, and he will come straight up, and you'll be able to not only just get the uh, the video or audio of this, but also the transcription and click straight through. So thank you so much, guys. Continue your great work. Uh, congratulations, and uh, all the best going forward. Thank, thank you. you.